peanut butter. A paste made out of dry roasted peanuts, also known as peanut mousse by Germans and peanut cheese by the Dutch. This popular pantry staple is amazing in every way, shape and form. It is nutritionally dense, affordable and convenient. Peanut butter is also versatile in its uses. It can be used on surfaces like rice crackers, bread, pancakes. It can be found in many bowls like porridge or yogurt and used in different mixtures like energy balls, fudge, chocolate bars, and those muck cakes when you're feeling alone and you lowered your standards. The brief history of peanut butter. No one can argue that peanut butter is one of the greatest inventions made by mankind. If you disagree, why did you click on this video? As early as 1500 BC, the people of South America grounded roasted peanuts into paste, mixed them in drinks, and used them as sacrifice offering to aid in the spirit's life. European explorers first discovered peanuts in Brazil. The explorers took them back to Spain, and from there, traders and explorers spread them to Asia and Africa. And Africans were the first people to introduce peanuts to North America beginning in the 1700s. The actual invention of peanut butter, its process of manufacturing and the machinery used to make it can be credited to at least three people, calling dibs on their peanut butter contribution. George Washington Carver, also known as Peanut Man, did not invent peanut butter. However, he played a big role in encouraging farmers to develop the crops that revitalized the soil like beans, sweet potatoes and peanuts. He also came up with hundreds of creative uses for them. In the 1920s, partial hydrogenation was added to the production, making the peanut butter more shelf-friendly. Moreover, sliced bread was a new thing in grocery stores, popularizing the iconic PB&J and the PB and mayo combo. And now we celebrate the National Peanut Butter Day on the 24th of January. Types of peanut butter. There are plenty of peanut butters in the world, but some are superior to others. I typically divide my peanut butters into four categories that can help you differentiate the peanut butters. First, natural versus processed. A natural peanut butter typically is made from handful of ingredients and it is possible to recreate at home if you possess a decent food processor and nothing to do in your free time. This peanut butter often forms an oil barrier protecting the peanut butter, which should be vigorously stirred back into it. Also, the texture of the peanut butter can be very inconsistent, very runny like a nose during allergy season on top and dry like unmoisturized skin on the bottom. On the other hand, we have more processed peanut butter that has a list of ingredients on the back that reads like a foreign language. The additives and stabilizers make the peanut butter very thick but if you're ever considering flying to space, this type of peanut butter is great to have on hand, since if it's flipped upside down, it will not move. Also in Europe, highly processed peanut butters often are referred to as American style, reminding us that this is not gonna be good for you, but you will enjoy it. Or not really, it depends. Smooth versus crunchy. It's been a heated debate between people who have nothing better to do with their lives. Smooth peanut butter is not only more easily spread on toast, but can be also used as an ingredient in many, many recipes. It also is great for shaving your legs. Trust me, I read it online. And then we have the crunchy peanut butter. For people who love a spontaneous peanut chunk in their oatmeal. Or that other oatmeal. Both of these choices are valid, but statistically, the majority prefers one over the other. Personality and preference. Your peanut butter preference can tell a lot about your personality. You're either basic and boring and more likely to bail on your friend's plans to binge a new Netflix show. Or on the other side, you don't believe in climate change. But how is peanut butter made, you might ask? Well, it all starts from harvesting. At harvesting? Anyway, as the name suggests, the peanuts are harvested by placing peas and any type of nut next to each other in an enclosed space. After they get some time to mingle with each other, peanuts will be formed. Next, we go to shelling. After that, the peanuts get stripped from their shell, like a coat revealing two or three kids sneaking into an R-rated movie. Next, the peanuts go through a dry roasting process. This helps lower the peanuts' self-esteem, making them more submissive. You taste better than you look. Oh. More like peanut. Oh. The dry roast process either is employed in batches or more of a continuous method. You're so flavorful, no one wants to make milk out of you. Oh. After the dry roast, peanuts are cooled down with an old-fashioned paper technique. 
The cooling process is completed when the temperature is finger touchable. Then peanuts will undergo either a heat blanching or water blanching to remove the remaining seed coats. After blanching, the peanuts are inspected to eliminate the ones that could not handle the roasts. Grinding. Not that type of grinding. The peanuts are sent to grinding to be manufactured into peanut butter. At this point, salt, sugar, and vegetable oil stabilizer are added. The most important part of the process is... And that's how you get rich quick by eating peanut butter. Alternatively, crunchy peanut butter is made by stomping the peanuts until the ideal texture is achieved. The last step is packaging. Once cooled, the peanut butter is pumped into jars and vacuum sealed. And the label is the most important part to differentiate yourself from the competitors. You can see the difference when a company invests a lot of money and creates a nice and intricate thought-through design, or when they hire an unpaid intern to do the job for them. Depends on the standards. Alternatives. For everyone suffering from a peanut allergy, my deepest apologies, and you should stop. Nevertheless, alternatives to peanut butter can be easily found in the grocery store, with an overpriced price tag. They can be any other type of nut that isn't peanut, like almond, or cashew, maybe sesame, or Nutella. Unless the bag says it may contain peanuts, you're okay. But if you're suffering from fear of choking on peanut butter, and if you ever had the urge to eat peanut butter straight out of a jar, to cope with your feelings, I would recommend eating it with a really tiny spoon. If you find yourself hoarding a bunch of empty peanut butter jars, here are some ideas of their second lives. 1. Use it as a holder for anything. 2. Use it as a vase. 3. Use them as not-so-convenient meal prep containers and storage for leftovers. 4. It can be used as a mug without a handle. That comes with the uncertainty of holding hot liquids. Ooh. 5. You can either make it into a cute, cozy, overdone fairy light aesthetic or just display it on a shelf showing how much peanut butter is consumed in this household. And finally, throwing away the old jar and buying a new peanut butter. There is no such thing as too much peanut butter. Unless you already have five on your shelf. <laughs>